Hi everyone, hope you are doing well. In this video, I'll demonstrate the morphology of the maxillary first premolar. So the maxillary first premolars are, there are four premolars in the upper arch. This one is the maxillary first premolar. This one is the maxillary second premolar on the right side. And on the left side, there are also two premolars. This is the first premolar. And this is the second premolar on the left side. So these teeth, these premolars, basically they assist canine in the tearing function and molar in the grinding function because these teeth have a cusp that is similar to canine so they help in the tearing function and because of the presence of the occlusal surface they help in the grinding function of the molars. molars. This is the maxillary first premolar. These teeth they emerge into the oral cavity at the age of 10 to 11 years and the root completion is around the age of 12 to 13 years. So these teeth basically at the age of 10 to 11 years, these teeth they replace the deciduous first molars. So these teeth they replace the deciduous maxillary first molars. So these are the two maxillary first premolars. This premolar is of the right side and this premolar is of the left side. So the buccal cusp of the first premolar is sharp and it resembles the cusp of the canine. There's a well development there's a well developed buccal ridge you can see and the buccal ridge it extends from the cusp tip to the cervical line. The cervical line it exhibits less curvature if you compare it with the anterior teeth. There are two slopes that are descending from the cusps. This is the mesiobuccal cuspal slope and it is this cuspal slope is larger in dimension as compared to the distobuccal cuspal slope. As compared to the distobuccal cuspal slope. The mesial outline of the crown is slightly concave till the contact point, while the distal outline of the crown is straight. Buccal portion of the root bears a close resemblance to the canine, but it is smaller in dimension. The root curves in a distal direction. So this is the mesial aspect. You can see two cusps. This is the buccal cusp and this is the palatal cusp. Both of these cusps are well within the confines of the root. This ridge is the mesial marginal ridge. You can see a developmental groove that basically extends from the occlusal surface to the marginal ridge. This is the cervical line. On the mesial aspect, the cervical line exhibits less curvature if you compare it with the anterior teeth. This is the buccal root and this is the palatal root. You can see a slight inclination on the palatal side. You can see a slight inclination of the buccal root towards the palatal aspect, while the palatal root is rather straight. The root trunk is long on the stud and it makes about half of the root length. This is the distal aspect. From the distal aspect, the crown is very much similar to that from the mesial aspect. Except that the crown, the cervical line has less curvature as compared to the mesial side. And there are no developmental depression on the marginal ridge. The marg this is a distal marginal ridge and it is smooth with no developmental groove. And there is no developmental depression on the distal side. From the palatal aspect, the palatal cusp is smooth and spheroidal as compared to the buccal cusp. The cervical line is smooth and the curvature of the cervical line is towards the root apex. The palatal portion of 
the tooth is smaller mesial distally as compared to the buccal aspect. Therefore, some part of the mesial as therefore some part of the mesial aspect and some part of the distal aspect is visible from the palatal aspect. Because the lingual cusp is smaller as compared to the buccal cusp, therefore you can see the cuspal slopes, the mesial cuspal slopes, a slope and the distal cuspal slope from the palatal aspect. From the occlusal aspect, the crown is more angular in shape. So you can see the crown is more angular in shape. It is not circular. In fact, it has a hexagonal appearance from the occlusal aspect. The crown is wider mesiodistally on the buccal side as compared to the palatal side. The, buccoling, the buccopalatal or sometimes referred as buccolingual width is more as compared to the mesiodistal dimension. As compared to the mesiodistal dimension. There is a well defined central groove that divides the crown into a buccal portion and a palatal portion. The central developmental groove it extends it extends to the mesial marginal wedge and forms the mesial marginal developmental groove. There are two fossas over here. You can see this fossa is known as the mesial triangular fossa. And this fossa is known as just adjacent to the distal marginal wedge, a fossa. And that fossa is known as the distal triangular fossa.